Hello, everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, October 21st. Your show hosts are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffitt, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. Thanks to Tammy for doing closed captioning for us. Our topic today is Becoming a Better Teacher with our special guest, Rushton Hurley. I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy, who will now introduce Rushton and ask him the newbie question. Hi, everyone. I am so excited to have Rustin Hurley joining us today to share his passion for helping teachers. I have been a huge fan of Rustin for many, many years, and I really value his monthly newsletters that are always free and loaded with incredible links and resources for teachers. So if you haven't subscribed to his newsletters, be sure to do that today. He'll be telling us more about that, I'm sure. Rushton's enthusiasm and boundless energy, and as you've already noticed, tremendous sense of humor for supporting teachers and students, especially through the use of videos, is always so motivating. And I'll guarantee his excitement is highly contagious. Rushton has worked and studied on three continents as a high school Japanese language teacher, principal of an online high school, a teacher trainer, and a speaker, and definitely an author. He founded and is the executive director of the educational nonprofit Next Vista for Learning, which houses a free library of videos by and for teachers and students at nextvista.org. He is heavily involved in service efforts in his community, and he has a master's degree in education and East Asian studies from Stanford. Rustin regularly keynotes at conferences, that's where I've seen him many times, and has trained and worked with teachers and school leaders around the world. His fun, thoughtful talks always center on inspiration and creativity and the connection between engaging learners and useful, affordable technology, simple and practical, the power of digital media, and professional perspectives and experiences of teachers at all levels. We're going to get to hear about his first book, Making Your School Something Special, which was released in January of this year, and also his second book, Making Your Teaching Something Special, which was just released in June. So. Thank you so much for joining us, Rustin, and I'm going to advance us to the newbie question and have you take over and answer that. So all of the things you do made me think about teacher reflection, and I'd love to have you comment on what does teacher reflection on teaching practices mean? And why do you think it's important for teachers to find time to reflect on their teaching? Cool. Well, happy to answer it. Uh, first, thank you, Peggy, for the introduction. Thank you, Lori, for getting things started. I think you mentioned you're in southwest Arkansas. I actually did tons of my growing up in Magnolia. So uh, go mule riders <laughs> from Southern Arkansas University. Um, Teacher reflection on teaching practices. I, well, I can tell you what it means to me. And, and I think that one of the things that happens in a lot of teaching environments, a lot of teaching systems, is that we kind of get farther and farther from the, the, the passions that brought us to teaching uh, professionally in the first place. And that has to do with all of the little things, the fires we have to put out, the, the annoyances, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I see reflection with colleagues, you know, kind of a creative brainstorming process that is the kind of thing that, that gets us back in touch with those things that got us into teaching originally. Uh, and, and partly because it's fun. Um, I don't think we spend enough time talking about the pedagogical importance of cool and fun in our work, uh, but I'll certainly talk about those things today because as we have fun sharing ideas and getting excited about possibilities, we, we tend to start into that mode of saying, I want to try this. And then you try something, and maybe you reach that next kid. And, and you know when you reach that next kid, then you're really tapping into the very best piece of what it means to teach. So, 
So I think reflection is about is about developing ideas and trying them out and reaching the next kid. So there. Now, should I just keep going on from here? I think I should. OK, great. Welcome, everybody. Uh, so so the idea of becoming a better teacher uh, is is something that I'm, I'm kind of jazzed to share ideas with you about. Uh, and, and I'll start by saying that that every one of us can improve. Right. And that, that may sound like wildly obvious, you know, kind of like, oh, great. Every one of us can improve. But, uh, you know, the question is whether we act on that understanding of our work. I mean, you know, the the uh, the opposite is, is is clearly a bit ludicrous, you know. So can you improve? Nope. I'm so good at what I do that there is no way I could get any better. Nope. Nobody's in that category. And if they are, that's clearly a sign that they need to get better. So uh, if if everyone can get better, we're you know, we're agreed on that. Then the question is how? And and for a long time, people have been in that space where they say, oh, well, you know, you you. you you do a lot of really complex, time-consuming, and perhaps expensive things. And and one of the one of the big messages for me today is that is that you know teaching, getting better as a teacher can be something that is easy, uh, quick, and fun. And so we'll we'll talk about that in in some detail as we go forward. All right. So as uh, as some of you will love to hear, and for others it'll be a, a moment of like, well. Um, I am big into citing sources and sources that I can legally use. So if you are not yet a fan of Creative Commons, may I encourage you to go out and, and, and join the fold and, and spread the good news because Creative Commons essentially says, here, you know, this, this picture I took, this footage I, I took, this thing that I wrote, this, uh, you know, these, you know, this music that I put together, all of this is free. Take it, but cite your source. And so, so that's that's this beautiful, beautiful thing for, for teachers, and I hope that that's something that's on people's radars. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me because I'm the one speaking. So I figured that's probably a good idea, and if I leave the bounds of humility, I, I, I'm bowing towards my screen at the moment. You can't see it, but it's happening. Okay, so I did a lot of my growing up in Arkansas uh, in a town called Magnolia. Uh, Magnolia is in southern Arkansas, about uh, an hour east of Texarkana and 20 minutes north of the line. Uh, and so that, that's Louisiana and a great place to have grown up, lots of wonderful people. And, uh, and, and being in a small town is, is, is pretty cool. Uh, you know, I think that one of the great things about being in a small town is you, you work with the idea of you got to get along, right? Because everybody knows everybody's business. Now, I moved to Texas uh, for college, although I'm originally from there. I was born in, in Texas. And went to went to university in San Antonio, and San Antonio is one of those cities that you know. For, for those of you who are overseas, by the way, uh, uh, and and Tippy and Tiziana and and uh, anyone else who who's uh, on the list but hasn't yet said, hey, I'm in this country. Uh, when you come to the United States, make sure to visit San Antonio. It's just this wonderful, beautiful city. It's got a got an area called the Riverwalk, which is in the picture you're looking at at the moment, and it's a really special place. But uh, but often people people don't know. I could go on and on, but I won't. Now, uh, after I graduated from college, I moved to Japan. Uh, I I went there because I had an opportunity to teach English alongside Japanese teachers of English in high schools and junior highs. And uh, I had spent a semester in Japan uh, during my junior year, and had had decided that that it was, that it was this really cool and interesting place, and and the language in particular was something. Uh, something fascinating to me. So, uh, so I'm this major fan of, of the city of Kyoto. I think it's just one of the coolest spots on the planet. Uh, but, but also working in the high schools and junior highs of the Goto Islands uh, in western Nagasaki Prefecture, I, I discovered that I really enjoyed teaching. I really liked working with teens in particular. Teenagers are this fascinating crowd that by and large, doesn't know squat, but thinks they know everything. You know, you know the group. Uh, and uh, and yet, they're kind of coming into their own intellectually. They really do have interesting ideas about a lot of things if they if they're comfortable enough to share them and if encouraged to to explore them in, in interesting ways. So so I, I kind of fell in love with the idea of of becoming a teacher. Now, after a few more years overseas, and uh, and that that included time and 
Australia and uh, Argentina and a couple other places. I, I moved to California for graduate school uh, and became a teacher in San Jose. So this is San Jose City Hall you're, you're looking at right now. Just a cool, interesting place, right? Um, and became a Japanese language teacher. And I thought, oh, you know, this is going to be great. All of these kids coming into my classroom are going to be, you know, kids who are ready to start the next trans-specific business and go to MIT, MIT or, or wherever. No, no, no. The kids coming into my classroom like animated movies. That, that was like, that's like the, the 90 percent of the, the students I had were, were like, hey, we got to watch cartoons. And I'd be like, no, but we're going to do tons of homework. It'll be great. And they'd look at me like, hmm. But, you know, after about six weeks, you know, they're, they're making real progress with Japanese and people are like, wow, you can read that. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of room to develop confidence with kids, you know, in, with, with something that's a little different. So I became a principal after almost 10 years uh, teaching high school and uh, and did that in, in Texas. And I was principal of a K-12 school and then an online high school. And uh, and then my wife got recruited back to California. We moved back here and I started Next Vista for Learning, which is my own little attempt to save the universe from ignorance one creative video at a time. Thank you very much. Uh, and I figured there's a lot of ignorance out there, so there's there's a lot of work to be done. But regardless, uh, the idea is to celebrate uh, how how people come at their learning in cool and creative ways. And so we have these very short videos. It's a totally free library, free to contribute to, free to download from, uh, and uh, and over 2,000 videos from teachers and students around the world. I hope you'll you'll give that a look at some point along the way as well. Now. Um, as, a, as you see in front of you, you'll get these slides. That, that's not a threat, uh, nor is it uh, a prediction of understanding so much as I will give you the link at the end and, and uh, the, the Classroom 2.0 Live team will make sure that it's uh, kind of all over the place so that you can get back to all of the slides that are the slides I've contributed to today's program. Now, as mentioned before, I wrote books. Woo! Books! Now, now these two books are uh, are are complementary, right? You know, the first one, making your school something special, is about how learning activities become the stories of success in a school. How do you, how do you how do you work with others to help people know what children experience at the school? Uh, and so it, it's about developing better and better learning activities. It's about uh, confidence. It's about telling your stories as a, as a community. And it occurred to me while writing it that uh, that that I had plenty of advice directly for classroom teachers. And so after I finished the first book, I wrote Making Your Teaching Something Special uh, with 50 pieces of advice. Uh, they're in very short chapters, like two to three pages each. And so they're easy to read, that kind of thing. And uh, and they're, they're the basis for, for my contention at the beginning yeah. that that you can get better as a teacher uh, quickly and 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 having fun doing so. So we will we will explore that in, in in serious detail going forward. So this week is a special week for me. Um, the the <laughs> the social media effort uh, was was to launch a thing called the Five Day Teacher Challenge. Uh, now the Five Day Teacher Challenge uh, was something I I kind of thought up with some people that I work with in in the uh, in the publishing group that, that published kindly published my books. Uh, Ed Tech Team Press, great crowd, and uh, and we thought, you know, it would be cool to get something out there that would be really useful to people and you know, kind of fun to do. Let, let's let's try something. And I said, well, you know, what about a challenge? I like that. I like that. Go with that idea. So you know, we ended up with this <laughs> with this five day teacher challenge. Not not really a cleanse in any in any particular sense, but you know, just the idea that you know you could get together and and kind of work with with some ideas. So each day, uh, there was a couple of ideas, and you'd pick one and give it a shot. And there are all kinds of ways to kind of see what people uh, have done with this. The hashtag 5BTC is, is one way to see what, what people put out there. So I'd encourage you to look for that on Twitter and elsewhere. Um, and, and so even though it was Monday to Friday of this week that just finished, uh, the link that, uh, that is out there that, that I think Peggy put out, yeah, rushtonh.com slash 5 day will allow you and anyone you know to kind of go in and, and try it yourself. So, you know, it, it's, not the, it's not anything that's limited by time, right? So, so get in and, and take a look. You know, it's free to do. Uh, you know, mostly the goal is for you to find one or two or three things 
that allow you to reach that next kid, right? That student in your classroom that you haven't quite reached before, and maybe a new idea will allow you to go, oh, yeah, 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 I got it. You know, let's try that. And the kids are like, hey, I like this, and suddenly, you know, life is much better. So what I want to do today is, is I want to explore several ideas uh, in, in the space of making your teaching better. And so I figure all of you are either teachers or involved in education in some way, and so we can, we can work with these ideas uh, quite a bit going, going through it. And, and in doing that, uh, I want you to know that, uh, that I, 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 need you to, I need you to take part, right? So, so you know, get, get over there in the chat, get ready to add some ideas, because if, if everybody's adding ideas in the chat, this is going to be wildly cool. Uh, and if people aren't, then it will be less wildly cool. So uh, let's, let's zip into this a bit. Now, what you see is a fact. Grapes grow in Italy. It's not a fake fact. It's a fact. And uh, the reason I have it there is because I was working with some teachers a few years ago and uh, working on a particular idea that will become very clear in just a moment. And I asked the teachers uh, to, in groups, to create a set of Google Slides, and each one put a geographic fact of any particular kind on the top of their slide. And then they were to go and to take a look at the other slides and add questions that follow on that fact. So, so here is my first, uh, you know, get, get ready to do something. So bear your typing fingers. Here we go. What I want you to do is I want you to write a question that follows on that fact. So you look at grapes grow in Italy. Okay, what question comes to mind? Any question will do. Just toss it into the chat, but let's, let's, let's get this a go on. Let's add some, add some questions. I like to think I can hear typing happening across the universe. What kind of grapes? What are grapes used for? Great, keep going. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's get some more out there. These are the kinds of things that we ask students to do. Are they sweet? Ah, oh, I, I, I actually like that on, on multiple levels. Where is Italy? Doug, awesome. What is the growing season for grapes? How much of them end up as wine? Susie, yeah, that was a focused question right there. Well done. All right, what kind of climate? And, you know, why are they thriving in Italy? These are good questions. All right, perfect. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the questions that they came up with when we, when we did this activity. So, so the first questions that they did were these. You know, so they went to each other's slides and they, they what else goes in Italy? What well, probably some people, where else are grapes from? These are perfectly good questions, right? There's nothing wrong with these questions. Um, and and at a, after a few minutes of, of looking at each other's facts and, and adding questions, I asked them, I said, so, you know, did you put questions in? You know, they all said, yes, we did. Then I said, are they fascinating? And they looked at me like, um, give us a few more minutes. <laughs> I said, okay, fine. So, so they went back, and I'm about to show you the questions that these that, that came up on this person's slide from, from her group mates. These are the same people doing the same activity on the same day in the same setting. Okay, so these are their questions after asking uh, for a little fascinating. Now, I think we would quickly agree that these are far more interesting questions, yeah? Uh, and, and why everybody suddenly zipped into wine as teachers, you know, that's probably a different conversation and, uh, one, one I'm sure we could, we, could, <laughs> we can talk about. But, but, you know, here's the difference. And, and this, this one's big. So if, if I, if, if you're, you're kind of getting tired of my voice, you know, hang in there. This is important. Or at least I think it is. How often do we look at kids and say, here's what I want you to do. And so they do what we want them to do, hopefully. And you get this stuff coming back from them. But we never stop and say, could you make it fascinating? You know, and then they might blink at you and say, look, I've, I've got to read a lot of these, you know, 30, 90, 150, you know. And if some of you make it fascinating, it'll really help me out. Could, could you make what you do fascinating? Now, not everybody will, right? However, some will. And, and what you'll get back will probably be the stuff that keeps you going. You want to have stuff coming back from kids that you look at and you say, wow, that's really, really cool. And, and we have to kind of open things up a bit, you know, because if their expectation is I simply need to do what I've been asked to do, you're going to get these low-level answers typically, right? But if, but if they've been challenged, if you say, 
all right, now I'm looking for some fascinating. Some of them will be like, I'll give you some fascinating, and, and you'll end up with some pretty cool stuff. So, so I hope this is something you try. Uh, I'd, I'd love to, to hear back from you on this, by the way. I'll give you multiple ways uh, to stay in touch with me. And, and if, if you try something out with your kids and, and they, they say, hey, you know, here's this thing, and you're like, whoa, that's like the coolest thing ever, then, then please email it to me and let me know because I'd love to share that story with others. Because, you know, the more we share these stories about cool stuff that's out there, the more fun we have as teachers, the better we do, the more kids we reach, the more personally and professionally satisfied we'll be, the, the happier and, and uh, more wonderful the, the universe becomes. There you go. So, so there's, there's my first little, little tidbit for, for making your teaching better. Ask kids for fascinating. Uh, you know, we just, we, just, we just should, right? All right. So I want to test out our, uh, our, uh, our little, uh, little voting thing whopper, which probably has a much better term that's escaping my, my, my memory at the moment. But are you ready for the next thing? And so vote yes or no. You know, I mean, you know, if, if you can add something different, just say, oh, well, I'd, I'd like to actually spend more time you know, working with this, whatever. I would just, you know, toss that if you're ready, if you're ready for that next thing. This will allow me to know how many, how many people I still, I still have going, how many I've lost. I've got four of you still playing it. That's awesome. Everybody else, you know, no, no worries. Uh, so uh, if you jump, jump in when you can. You know, we just want to kind of be in that space where it's like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm learning something cool. I'm learning something good. Okay. So uh, I, I, would, I would keep going on this one, but it turns out that the, the vote is actually like six to zero at the moment with a bunch of people abstaining. Uh, I'm not quite ready. Oh, fine. You know, but <laughs> okay, here we go. Boom. Now, I've got a picture in front of you, and, and here, is, uh, here is your chat card answer. <laughs> Susie gets awesome points. All right, now, uh, what I want you to do is I want you to stop and I want you to say, okay, uh, think of something, something uh, that, that around your office that you see, or, you know, so wherever you're sitting, you're in your office, you're in uh, your living room, you are, uh, you know, sitting by the bank of a river, you know, looking at the clouds pass by, and you, you, you're somehow connected, you know, whatever it is you've got. What I want you to do is I want you to tell me how that thing you're looking at relates to this picture. Now, the chances are good that there isn't an obvious connection, and, and actually, I'm hoping there is no obvious connection. So what I want you to do is just look around you, find a couple of things that are, are – or find one thing that's kind of in your immediate vicinity, and just, just come up with some explanation as to how that thing could relate to the picture that I'm showing you. So my donut looks like the wheels on cars. Peggy, awesome. And uh, donuts are a gift of the Lord above to make us better human beings. Uh, if I didn't fully understand that, by the way, I was in Maine for Actim, their, their ed tech conference, uh, about a week and change ago. And uh, in Portland, I went to a place called the Holy Donut. And uh, it, was, it was heavenly, as it turns out. All right, let's see. Surrounded by a forest of pile-up desks, says Doug. <laughs> pile-up desks, awesome. And so the, the cars, in some sense, represent pile-up desks. My kitty is half-hidden like the cars. Oh, we, we recently vacuumed, which, which makes me think that the kitty is hiding from the vacuum and not that she's halfway into the vacuum, or at least that's my hope. Uh, let's see. My flower postcard is filled with the bright colors. Also, yeah, all right. So seeing lots of colors around you, that's awesome. All right, a painting I have on my wall shares some of the colors. All right, good, good, good. Sherry and Edith, that's cool. I'm near some farm fields. Okay, so fields. And very quickly, you get from fields to, you know, things growing in fields. And, and in this particular field, we have old Cadillacs, apparently. And I have a Model T car that says Sears Roebuck and Company. Ha, <laughs> cars have changed. That's cool. Very, very cool, Patty. All right, my coffee table has things organized in stacks. Looks like the cars in this pit. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So, so I'm, I'm hoping more stuff will, will, will come in. But, again, I think we could agree that these are cool answers, yeah? You look at, you, you look at the different things that people have come up with, and, and they're cool. Now, now I'll, you might stop and say, okay, you know, that, that's nice that this is cool, and it's nice that there are colors there, and it's nice that there are half-buried Cadillacs that people decide they want to, uh, 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 you know, paint, but, but what does this have to do with teaching? Okay, so I want to I 
I want to describe two ways of starting class. So this is another moment where I think I've gotten to something fairly important, so, so hang in there. First, you might start class this, class this way. All right, everybody, I want you to settle down. We've got a lot of important stuff to cover today, and I want to, I want to hit the main ideas from yesterday's class. Now, this is a, a pretty typical way of starting class uh, at a lot of levels, but um, I want to suggest that there are two messages in, in starting class that way that you probably don't mean and certainly don't want to convey. All right, everybody, settle down which is kind of like saying this is about to be painfully passive. And, and, you know, active learning is by all measures far more effective learning. So the suggestion that what we're about to do is going to be going to be passive is probably not kind of what you had in mind. Now, uh, even bigger is the next part. I will now cover the main points from yesterday's class. What, what are the kids here there? Well, consider this. You don't have to pay attention today because tomorrow I'll summarize what's important. Now, we're certainly not suggesting that. All right, everybody, don't pay attention. That, that's not what we're doing. On the other hand, it's not what we say. It's what they hear. And so when we, when we do that kind of thing and say, you know, all right, I'll do that. And you might say, oh, I, I, I don't mean that, but what's the alternative? Well, here's the second way of starting class. Okay. All right, everybody, uh, time for class. What I want you to do is turn to your partner, and I want you to tell, tell, tell that person how what we studied yesterday relates to this picture on the screen of these half-buried cars. So, so now the kids are like, what? Right? And the chances are fairly good they'll turn to each other, and the first thing they'll do is say, hey, what, what did we study yesterday? So they will actually get into an active mode of, all right, let, let's figure out what we covered yesterday. So they're now actively engaged in what were the main points. Instead of having to cover it all yourself, your job is just to make sure they don't leave anything out. And so then, you know, people start saying, okay, there, you know, there's this connection and this connection. And, and really big this, when, when you ask a question that way, you are not asking a right or wrong question, right? You're not saying what's the right answer. If, if we studied um, multiplying fractions yesterday or tying your shoes or elasticity in economics or, or whatever it is, right, whatever it is we studied yesterday hopefully has no particular obvious connection to what's in this picture. And consequently, what the students come up with might be amazing. Uh, and, and that can happen for a couple of reasons. One. When, when you ask a question of students that comes down to, do you know the right answer? What happens? And let me tell you what happens. Most of the kids defer to the three or four kids who always get the right answer. Uh, that's another thing that we're not trying to accomplish, but it's what does get conveyed. And so, so if you think about that, you're like, okay, well, I don't, I don't want to lose, uh, you know, my, my kids right off the bat. And, and we ask them a question that doesn't have a right answer, they're, they're far more likely to contribute something because they're not about to be judged for their correctness, you know. So, so that's part of it as well. What we're engaged in with something like this is a, is a creativity exercise. And the more people, you know, kind of work on these ideas, the more they become confident that they can do these things. Every single creativity, creativity researcher I have, I have read, every last one, tells this again and again. Creativity is not something you either have or don't have. It's something you develop. So we have to give kids that opportunity to develop creative confidence. Okay. There's my credit for the picture. Uh, I didn't have it before because I didn't want, I didn't want any leading information uh, to, to keep us from, from coming up with some cool stuff. Now, by the way, if you're kind of intrigued by this picture, it is Amarillo, Texas. It is a place called Cadillac Ranch. There's this, there's this kind of highway, and, you, and you, you drive up, you park your car, and you walk in. And what people do is they walk in with paint, and they paint the cars. Now, how does that relate? I don't know that I can tell you, but I'm sure we could come up with some pretty cool stuff. All right. So checking in with you. Uh, please vote yes or no. You're ready for the next idea for getting better. Talk to me. Talk to me. Are you ready for the next idea? All right. We got we got. Four who are ready for the next video. Five, I think. Excellent. All right, looking for some more. I'm going to start calling people out. My buddy Wes is on. Wes, Bo, you ready for the next thing? Wes, like, I just got here, man. 
So all good, all good, all good. So so yeah, let's see. Yeah, we got five. I'll, I'll go with five, six, six. Awesome. All right. Those of you who haven't typed in your, you, some of you are like, you know, it's against my religion to actually do anything related to a green check. Oh, okay, fair enough. Uh, you know, I get it. You know. All right. So anyway, so here we go. So we're gonna go to the next thing. Okay. Here we go. We have in front of us a cowbell, and as as any fan of Saturday Night Live would know, uh, more cowbell is important. Now, you might say, okay, well, what does this have to do with better teaching? Okay. So so here's here's the thing. One of the things that goes wrong in a lot of classrooms is that kids begin to get the impression that their teacher is not in control. Now, that can be taken two ways, not in control of the classroom and not in control of him or herself. And how do we give them this idea? One of the easiest ways to give the idea that, that we're losing control is by raising our voices. When we say things like, you know, quiet, quiet, you're, you're so loud, quiet, you know, like that, that conveys the idea to kids that, that you're losing it in some way, right? It being control, I assume, and not your mind. But, but the problem is that kids do get loud, uh, or hopefully, you know, they, they, they get excited about ideas or, you know, something, and they begin to get kind of noisy, and we have to redirect them. And the easiest way to do it is to get louder, but, but we don't want to convey the idea that we're losing control because that changes the dynamic in an unproductive way. What might we do? But what I used to do as a native Texan, because this is in my DNA, is to pick up a cowbell that I had in the room and I would clang it. Now, when I would ring a cowbell uh, with, without any pretense of humility, I could rattle the windows, all right? And so it would be like, you know, it's just really, really loud. And kids would be like, wah, right? However, when I'd make a lot of noise with my cowbell, they'd all turn and look at me, and I could put it down and smile and say, okay, and so next piece of grammar, right? And, and we'd move on. And, and in, in keeping my voice down and keeping a smile on my face and, and using something totally different to, to capture their attention, I feel like I was doing – a, a a lot of good work to, to maintain the right atmosphere in the classroom. I'm curious, how do you, how do you kind of capture kids' attention in your classrooms? Please put this in the chat. You know, do you use a noisemaker of some kind? Uh, do, you, do you shout at the kids? Do you, um, you know, turn off the lights? What, what do you do to help, help people uh, redirect their attention? Sherry, a harmonica, how cool is that? Raised hand, good to go. Yeah, 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 nice. Five-finger countdown. <laughs> of course, at the end of the five-finger countdown, you, 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 they, they better play Neil Diamond music. Doug, awesome. At the end of the five-finger countdown, you, you, you better have quiet, or at least, because uh, if you slow down waiting for them at some point, you, you, you worry that they'll be like, ah, yeah, whatever. I clap my hands three times, all right. If they clap back and then you engage in a little poetry together, that's even better. At my new school, most of the teachers were trained in responsive classroom that involves the raised hand technique. Patty, that's, that's beautifully described. All right. Of these, hey, wind, chime, wind chimes. All right. All right. All right. Cool. Uh, I, <laughs> we're using this as part of the five day teacher challenge this last week and somebody, somebody posted a picture of a gong and said, yeah, I tried this. Didn't really work. <laughs> I thought, but you know, that's pretty cool. Another thing I, I do, which is similar to what Peggy is saying right now, if you can hear me clap twice, is I, I will say in a group, like when I'm, when I'm training a group of teachers now, everybody's kind of excited about some tool that's going on, and I need to capture their attention. And I'll say, okay, and, you know, I'll get some of them, but not all. I'll say, hey, if you can hear me, please say, shh. And then, you know, five, six, or ten people will go, shh. And, and that often gets people to stop and go, huh? So, so that's, a, that's another, another technique. So, so redirecting things in such a way that, that you don't look like you're losing control is important. So that, that's a third tip. So as a review so far, we've got, uh, we've got four uh, uh, total, and I've done, done three. The first was make your teaching better by ask for, asking for fascinating. You know, the kids will give you more fascinating work if you ask for it. The second one, uh, you know, foster creativity by, uh, by doing review in a different kind of way where you put up a picture that has no particular connection to 
uh, to you know what you studied yesterday and say, so how does this relate to yesterday? And then they talk with each other and remind each other what they actually learned yesterday. Third one is uh, use a noise maker, not your voice, to to capture their attention and just smile as you as you do it. And I think that's good. Uh, and then our fourth one. Here we go. So the fourth little tip. Let's do with video. Whee! And you might say, well, I saw that coming. You said that you run a little video site. Yes, very perceptive of you. Well done. Now, video is is another one of those things that that does a great job capturing attention. Uh, when you press play on on a video, something about video gets even the most contrary kids to stop and pay a little attention. So, so okay. So, what what kind of what kind of videos should you use? All right. Well, I would contend that one of one of what you want to do, one of the things you want to do, is to use videos that are by students, right? So student-created videos can be really, really cool to watch because expectations have changed. They're like, hey, this is something, you know, somebody else has done, uh, then it's our age. Uh, you know, it, it, they, they tend to find, find it cool to watch what other people have done. But, but instead of just showing them one video and being like, we will now all watch this video, which is not a bad move, but, but on the other hand, instead of doing that, I would encourage you, to have kids take a look at videos made by other kids and, and have a set of videos that they can go to. So Peggy just put in a chat a link to the video library at Next Vista, which is a great way to do that, uh, I, would, I, would, uh, I, would, I would happily say. But I'm also going to give you another uh, link here. All right. Yeah, let's do this. Boom. This is a doc that I made, a, a publicly facing Google doc, which, uh, which has sets of student videos. So, so they're, they're particularly, I think, interesting examples of, of student created videos that are out there. And by giving them a choice as to what they watch, this, this helps them begin to think more in terms of, you know, there are a lot of ways to create videos, because in this set, you're going to see uh, videos that are footage, you know, where people are acting in front of a camera, that's fine. Uh, you're going to see videos that are stop motion. You're going to see videos that are art or images with uh, someone narrating behind it. Uh, you're going to see videos where uh, somebody's drawing and it's sped up and somebody's narrating that. There are a lot of ways to make a videos. There's, gonna, there's even some screencasts in there, I believe. And if you look at those videos uh, on that page, uh, which I wouldn't encourage you to do now. Uh, we've only got so many minutes left of our, our little shindig here. But but if you look at the videos on that page, you'll see a lot of different kinds of of approaches to sharing what they're learning. So so part and parcel to this suggestion of of show them a lot of different kinds of things, uh, and and let them begin to say, oh, you know, I want to make a video like that. Oh, you know, I want to, and, and getting them into that space where they're trying some different things out. Um, I'd also suggest that. You know, if you regularly uh, assign kids something, you know, a fairly standard assignment, so maybe it's, I want you to write, uh, you know, a one-page paper on blah, 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 or I want you to make a PowerPoint on blah, 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 or whatever it is, that you might also give that assignment this way. Okay, everybody, uh, you have a one-page paper on, you know, topic, whatever, due Friday of next week. However, uh, if you want to do something different, and you get it approved by me this Friday, then you can do something other than a one-page paper. Now, giving them choice is a really good move, yeah, because a, a lot of these kids are, 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 like we talked about before, in that, in that kind of pleaser kind of mode of, I will do what I've been asked to do, and once it's done, I can move it off the list of things that oppress me, uh, right? But if, if, if essentially you say, you can do this a different way, as long as you're showing me that you have mastered the content and, and, and shown connections to other things in some in an interesting way. They are then kind of in that space of, well, I'd much rather make a video, or I'd rather do interpretive dance, or, or whatever it might be, but you, you have final say. So they come to you and say, here's my script for my video. And you look at it and say, good, this, this does handle this stuff, right? I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys put together. You know, that, that's kind of cool to, to, for, for a lot of kids to have a teacher who essentially, say, who essentially says, I'm up for seeing what you can do. 
as opposed to just being someone who checks off boxes. Did you do this? Yes. Did you do that? Yes. Did you do this? Yes. You know, and, and that's kind of what, what gets us all in a mode of like, about class. So, so we want, we want to be in that kind of space. So let's see, let's see, there was a, there was a cool Paula question, or I had a great day, sensitive day. I know, you know, like the kids know when you're feeling a little ill, and, and they'll like, they'll like help you out. They're, the, kid, the kids are actually paying much more attention than they let on, can do much better work than they let on, and are much nicer than they tend to let on. <laughs> uh, that sounds like someone who's taught teens for a long time. That'd be me. Okay, moving on. Okay, so here is that link. It's also in the chat. Uh, you know, as I mentioned before, you'll get these slides. You get a link to all of these slides. So if you, if you want to use this, please do. Um, I'd love for kids to look at what's at, at nextvista.org and say, hey, can we make some videos that can go there? And you say, we can make some videos that can be submitted for consideration, but you have to do a good job for them to go there. And we do these contests, and, if, you know, if uh, they, you know, if they meet all the rules, which is the tricky part, because often they don't. Uh, and, and then we write them back. And we say, so, you know, I see you've got music, but no credit. Uh, can you add that, showing that it's from one of the sites listed in the movie, uh, in, in the in the rules, and then and then resubmit? And the teachers are like, yeah, I told that kid five times. So so all, all that kind of thing. Love for you to share these things and to have them get excited about becoming, becoming published folks, right? All right. So there's a lot of video projects at my little, my little nonprofit, nextvista.org, and so we have these, these 90 seconds or less, creatively explain something one might encounter in school. That's kind of the main one. Uh, we do things where we ask kids to get to know service efforts in their community and to tell their stories in, in a short video. Uh, there's a set of videos, over 100 on different careers. Uh, those those are, are, are good fun. And then we're, we're trying to build a huge library of videos to help those who are learning English. Uh, they're very short videos, 20 to 40 seconds. You know, we take a high-frequency topic like um, like rooms of the house, and then each video would be one of the rooms, and there, there's a pair of videos, the video and then the subtitled version of the video. So so if you're interested in any of these, then by all means, stay in touch. I'd, I'd love to work with you on that. Okay. So I added a couple of example videos uh, in the slides. Uh, we're not going to look at them now, uh, but but just just once you get into the slides, you might take a look and see what you think. This is this very clever video from some students in Guadalajara about about what pi is in a circle. You know the relationship between the diameter and the and the circumference. Uh, but but a but a wonderful video from some kids in Mexico. Uh, here's a wonderful uh, service video about uh, about a way of feeding, uh, feeding those who, who are in need in, uh, here in Northern California. It's, it's, a, it's a cool description. I mean, very cool camera angles and, and use of, of editing techniques as well. Uh, and then here is a video that I, I include because I think it's inspiring. Uh, and, and I do believe that, that video is important not just for how we capture kids' attention, but how it inspires us. And this story of this guy who, who went to uh, to Sudan, South Sudan, I think, or uh, somewhere, and and helped people in a village who had lost arms uh, in uh, in in the fighting. Uh, 3D print them is is something rather amazing. So in our links, by the way, I've got uh, in there's the resources, and nextvista.org/resources will take you to this page, and it and I've got a whole bunch of freebies. Uh, broken down into five categories, you know, digital media freebies, collaboration freebies, search and research freebies, subject-specific freebies, and sources of inspiration. So there, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of really amazing videos that can kind of get you back in touch with, uh, with you know, the, the best part of who we are. And I would encourage you to go there and, you know, whatever you're kind of down a bit, you go there and click on one of those and, uh, and, and find something where you're like, wow, that's amazing. Hey, let me get that that link in for you as well. All right, so beep, and then we'll click on this thing right here. You get to hear like my color commentary of actually going through it. I'll probably come back if somebody's already done it. Nope, here we go. All right, sources of inspiration. Oh, uh, there you go. So give out a look, see what you think. You know, if you have any questions about it, of course, feel free to stay in touch with me. Um, I send out a monthly newsletter, uh, and uh, Peggy very kindly mentioned this earlier. Uh, and the idea in the monthly newsletter is to tell about projects we've got going uh, and share, you know, kind of cool ideas that people have, you know, have kind of come up with and, and 
stuff that I think is inspiring and tons of freebies, stuff that you should watch or read or try. And, you know, I figure people are busy. You know, it's kind of hard to take time to go exploring for things. And if somebody's doing that for you, it's not a bad thing. Okay. So uh, when, when we think about inspiration, I'm, I'm curious kind of what inspires you. So this is my last, hey, put something in the chat moment. Uh, if you would, uh, you know, do that. Like, what what do you do to find inspiration? What what are those what are those things you do? Those places you go, uh, you know, the kind of conversations you try to have that allow you to kind of get back in touch with the stuff that that really matters to you. So, if you would add that to the chat, right? What what are the things you do uh, to get inspired? I can see four or five people typing. Pinterest, yeah, okay. So Tammy goes in and finds some stuff there. Susie has a couple of Voxer groups. That's cool. You know, being in touch with people, you know, like you think back to the uh, Twitter chat, same thing, where, where, where you think about, um, you know, all of these people that are out there and, and, uh, and sharing cool ideas, and that's, that's a great way to get inspired. Peggy listens to music. Yeah, yep, yep. A lot of good music out there, absolutely. Those of you who haven't listened to anything from Toto recently should, should fix that problem. One of the greatest bands ever. You're like, you gotta be kidding. Nope. They're still around 40 years later. All right. Uh, Twitter, cool webinars. Yeah. Uh, a nice, uh, reflective, you know, kind of piece about you know, the cool stuff that Classroom 2.0 has put out there. Which is, I believe, getting close to 10 years of putting cool things out there. That's awesome. Doug, you watch kids at play. Ah, that's great. I saw a video, um, last year, like, um, this teacher in Canada. <laughs> It strapped a GoPro to a uh, uh, to a, a kindergartner uh, before the kindergartner heading out to the playground, and it's amazing. It's it's amazing to watch this kid like run out and jump up and down and be around the other kids. And and, and there's something I mean just 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 very moving actually about it. Um, but but it's all from all from the kid's perspective because it's a GoPro <laughs> attached to the kid. Doodling art, yes. Uh, if even if you think, oh, I'm, I'm no good at art, I'm no good at music, I'm no good at it, that's no excuse. You do it anyway because, you know, you find that you can learn little bits and bobs. One of the, one of the coolest things happening in ed tech right now is, is an interest in uh, uh, sketch noting, right? And so people like uh, Sylvia Duckworth are out there and put together these, you know, kind of uh, programs for helping you learn how to do this. And, and you learn that you can draw, you know. Oh, I can't draw. Of course you can draw. You know, I mean, anybody can draw. It's just a matter of what. And, and so once you learn, okay, you know, do this, this, and this, and now you've got, you know, a little cat face or whatever, that's how you get going on this. All right? Wes has a, has a wife. Good, good job, Wes, who is doing so many amazing things as a teacher. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Very cool. Nice, nice, nice. Languages. More cool stuff. Great. All kinds of cool things going on there. So. Um, in the space of being inspired, uh, I just wanted to kind of finish up with, with the story. So there's this guy uh, who's, I believe, in Wisconsin, and he, uh, he spent some time in uh, Latin America at an orphanage. And, and anyone who spends a few weeks volunteering at an orphanage learns something very quickly, and that's this. A lot of these kids have no personal history. So this, this really made an impression on him. And, and he came back to the United States and, and thought, you know, I really want to do something about this, and founded an organization called the Memory Project. And, and what's happened is that he's, he's connected with uh, orphanages all over the world. And, and someone at that orphanage will send him a set of digital pictures of the children at the orphanage. And, and he then takes those pictures and sends them out to high school art programs in North America that, that, are, that are taking part. So, so they go out to these, these art programs, and, and the teen artists in these high schools paint portraits of the children in the pictures. So they paint these portraits. They send these back to you know, his organization, and he then sends them on to the orphanages. So what you're seeing is a girl who's seeing her a portrait of her for the first time in her life. And if that kind of thing doesn't, doesn't kind of knock you over as amazingly cool, it, 
hard to know what would, right? So, so we have all of these people doing wonderful things all around us and, and these stories that allow us to stop and say, you know, I want to try something like that. I want to do something like that. I, I, I want to do this simple thing. Uh, and, and, and do it. Do it, do it, do it. Becoming a better teacher is not about like, you know, thousands of dollars and a, you know, six week summer course and, you know, big master's program. I mean, all of that stuff's fine. But, but essentially it's about taking little ideas and, and acting on them. And that's what the five day teacher challenge was about. It's kind of what the little bits and bobs we shared over the course of the session were about. And it's about, it's about being inspired to, to make a difference where, where, when and where you can, because, because we all can. All right. So my very first slide was, uh, um, was this picture, although it was, it was, uh, uh somewhat transparent. And, and I have it here again because I think, I think it, it's reflective of something. First of all, what it is, is it's, a, it's, a, it's from a Mayan ruin in, uh, in Belize. And, and it's the sun god changing into the jaguar at night to go hunting for food, right? I see it, though, as that really cool thing inside of you that you want to try, that you haven't tried yet, waiting to get out. It's got its hands up, like, I'm ready, I'm ready. So, so try these things out, yeah? You know, take, take an idea from the five-day, it's free, buy the book, it's not free, but it would sure make me happy, uh, and take those ideas and, and try this stuff out and, and do what you can to, like, reach that next kid. So, shameless plugs, woo, I, I wrote a book, I wrote another book, wee, there was the first one, there's the second one, wah, All right, and then go forward, you know, find, find what you can do, if you've got some questions, I'd be very happy to answer them, I think I may have pretty much run my time, but if we have time, I'm happy to do it. And that's how to stay in touch with me. So, Peggy, if you'd get that uh, that link in the chat, that would be awesome. But but there you go. That that's my presentation. Thank you for for joining in today. I now hand the microphone over to someone else. Thanks so much, Rustin. I did capture a question uh, from Maureen, um, and this was about the, uh, I think, the previous day review. How do you gauge their yeah. knowledge about a topic, uh, especially if it's brand new to them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so one of the first things I'd say is that compared to simply uh, r repeating uh, what, you know, what the main ideas would be, the, the active process is is something that is likely to give you a better idea of, of what they know rather than mm -hmm. maybe just, you know, they're nodding their heads at what you say. So, so at that point, you can then, you know, do a lot of different things. You can do, uh, you know, a chat tool like Today's Meet or Google Classroom. Uh, you know, you can have them hold up cards, you know, kind of, kind of showing, you know, what they think about different things. You know, just to kind of get an idea. There's a lot of kind of ways to do that, which would be that which follows the, the, hopefully active process of, of talking about what we covered the day before. Great question, Maureen. Okay. Um, this teacher wants to know what surprised you the most about the five-day teacher challenge? Well, I, so it, it's important to say that the reason, that what surprised me most is the number of people who got involved. There were over 2,000 mm -hmm. teachers who signed wow. up in 40 countries. And uh, why did that happen? And <laughs> Is it because I put it on Twitter and everybody responded? Oh, no, 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 no. I wrote to over 100 friends, uh, <laughs> Peggy among them, and said, could you help get the word out uh, about this? And, and so, so lots of people put out tweets and notes on Facebook and, and, and Pinterest and some other di different places just saying, hey, there's this thing. This is going to be fun. And, and w we didn't kind of say what it was to begin with. It was like, you know, all right, this cool thing's coming. You know, you know take an interest. And then five day teacher challenge. People are like, what is it? I said, we'll tell you later, you know. And so, so we, we added some mystery along the way and I think that ended up emphasizing the fun. But but if you if you get into the five day teacher challenge and you don't find it fun, stop. Right? I mean it it, it has to be the kind of thing that we look at and we go, Yeah, that's really cool. You know, I, I like that. I'm I'm excited about, you know, what can happen when, when we when we try different things. And so what I'll do is I will add to the chat uh, how, to, how to give it a shot yourself. The five day. There you go. Uh, and you can, you can give that a look and see what you think. Okay. 
you have been using video with students and teachers for over a decade. What has changed and is different now about this process? Wes, awesome question. Um, I, I would say what's changed is that the tools have gotten easier and easier and easier, right? Uh, and, and if you've never taken a look, for example, at Adobe Spark, uh, spark.adobe.com. Yeah. Somebody put that in as a proper link. Um, you know, that's, that's like the perfect example of, uh, of, of, of how easy it can be to make a video. And if you're like, I'm not sure, I need somebody to train me. Well, uh, YouTube is always waiting to train you. Go there and look up Adobe Spark tutorial and you'll find people who are like, here's how to do it. Peggy asked a question. Would you consider adding a bonus challenge that would be directed to educators who are not classroom teachers? Ah, great question. Actually, I had that question come up, you know, over the course of the week. Um, yes. Um, my, my goal is actually to, to stay in touch with all of these folks. Uh, I'll be writing them uh, as, as we go along. Uh, and, and I'll add some other challenges as we go as well. Uh, so, so Peggy, hear you loud and clear on that. But if, if you sign up at RussianH.com, right? Here we go. If you have not done so, please, please do so now. I mean, all all it asks for is your name and your email address and your country, right? Not county, country. Uh, and and uh, and just let me know, right? Uh, that that this is of interest to you. And uh, and I'll 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 kind of put out stuff that's helpful from time to time. If you ever get tired of it, you can click unsubscribe. No offense taken, right? But uh, but yeah 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 join in that would be cool thanks Peggy. Does anyone else have questions for Rushton? Those were the ones I was able to capture in the chat. I see Wes is typing. I'll also put my uh, uh, my email address in. Uh, and feel free to, to copy that and write. I mean, I, I, I write everybody who writes me, I write them back eventually. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, give, give, you know, give, give me your thoughts on this stuff. I, you know, I kind of think that uh, you know, the people are in a space of wanting to share all kinds of cool things, but, uh, you know, sometimes they're just not sure who to reach out to, and so there's one way to do it. Mm -hmm. And if you're into travel photography, take, take a look at what I put up on on Instagram. I, I love sharing pictures, uh, as, as you can tell from my slides. Would anyone like to get on the mic to share? Shy group that we have here. Wes. Okay, Wes. Hey, Rushton, it's awesome to be inspired by you as always today. And uh, do you think we're seeing, is it harder or easier today because of how fractured and how many different sources of information there are today in terms of the collaboration and the kinds of projects and things that you're doing, like the five-day challenge? Do you, do you, do you it, are things easier now at this stage, you know, 10 years after all the Web 2.0 and stuff like that has happened? Or where, where do you see us as, you know, folks aspiring to continue to be innovative and collaborating in, in, in a much easier place? Or is it, is it in some ways more challenging? Well, well thank you, uh, Speed of Creativity Man uh, himself. Uh, Wes, you, you, you have been inspiring people a long time, so I, I'm, I'm honored at, at your characterization of that. Um, I would I would say that it's easier uh, in the sense that while there isn't some, like one obvious place to go, maybe uh, on the other hand, when when there's kind of one place to go, a lot of people you know kind of feel like oh gosh you know I mean it, it's too big a group, and so so being able to to break it down into into smaller sets of folks that that you connect with because you you all share you know a a love of whatever it might be i think that's uh i think mean, i think that's actually helping us out and then with with easier tools along the way that just kind of builds confidence and sharing ideas and it's it's a it's a nice it's a nice cycle cool cool question thanks Wes. does anyone have any other questions
Okay. Uh, thanks so much, Rushton, for sharing with us today. I'm now going to turn the mic over to Peggy, who will tell us what's coming up next. Thank you so much, Rushton. I almost feel like today was just a real teaser because you have so many great ideas. And thank goodness we have all those resources we can go back to in the live binder and really dig deep and explore some of them because they are awesome and you're so inspiring. Thank you. We do have a bunch of great shows coming up, so I hope you all come back every Saturday that you can. And you know that we always record them, so if you can't make it on a Saturday, you can always watch the recording. Next week, we have the amazing Sarah Thomas. You may know her as Sarah the Teacher, joining us to share all about Edumatch. And the week after that, Tara Martin, who is the guru of using Snapchat for things like book snaps and gratitude snaps. You're going to love that. On November 11th, Tiffany Whitehead, amazing librarian, is going to be sharing all kinds of resources and ideas for helping teach students about fake news. And November 18th, we have Abby Futrell and Nancy Mangum, who are going to be sharing some things about coaching fellow educators. And if you've ever heard Abby, she is amazing. Great sense of humor. You're going to really enjoy that presentation. Then we'll take a week off for Thanksgiving weekend in the United States on November 20. But December 2nd, Stephen Anderson is going to be joining us for a great session on it, making your digital content accessible for everyone. And that's just such an important idea for us. And then December 9th, we have the always amazing Shannon Miller, who's going to be doing an entire webinar all about Buncee. And she has created so many examples on Buncee that you're going to love seeing the ideas she has to share. So I hope you'll come back and join us. Thanks, Peggy. The Discovery Education uh, Fall VertCon is coming up. And this link will get you to the place where you can sign up. Actually, Lori, that is today. today. Oh, OK. Yes. So it is today. And that's why I put it on there. But okay. it started early this morning. Yeah. But they were recording everything. So you, and it's all free. So you can go back and listen to earlier parts. Um, or you can join live parts coming up after our show. They're really doing a lot of sharing about all kinds of resources on um, uh, the DEN site. And some of them are free. Some of them require subscriptions. But today, they're giving out links where we can actually access things for free that you would have to pay for later. And their new DEN studio is amazing. So check it out if you have a chance um, later today. Terrific. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest. He's gathered all his PD resources in one place, including host your own webinar where you can sign up for a Blackboard Collaborate session. And as long as it's open to the public, it is free. You can nominate a featured teacher at this link. Uh, you can also take the link from within the Live Binder. You can nominate yourself as a featured teacher for the month as well. All the videos, all the recordings for the webinars are available on iTunes U. Again, a link you can take from the live binder. As you exit the session, the survey should open up in your browser. Or you can take the survey link from the chat or within the live binder. And at the bottom of the survey, you can request a professional development certificate. And it now prints. You get it back with your name on it. Please, though, request this to be sent to a personal email address and not a school email address. Schools tend to block these from getting to you. And thanks to Betty Ruffing for uh, sending these out. 
Special thanks to our special guests today, Rushton Hurley, to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today. Thanks so much for, to, for coming.